What's going on? Um, well, <laughs> so there was one thing we didn't get to before we left that I was particularly concerned about because we've never worked on it since we bought Lady Jupes, and it was the generator. Just 10 minutes away from the rough and dangerous borders of Canada, and all I can think about is going to Oregon. Well, actually, the total solar eclipse that'll be going right over Oregon on August 21st. I'm going down there, and I just wanted to get the word out to you guys that if you're gonna happen to go see this eclipse in the Oregon area and wanna meet up, I know it's a long shot and super late notice, but meetup.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting has the details, but more importantly, I'll have the live tracker on me, jupiterbroadcasting.com slash rover. I've got that embedded there. And if you want to come find me, where I may move around because the crowds are supposed to be crazy. It's supposed to be crazy. So I may move around. I'll have the live tracker at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash rover where you could like, you know, find me and stuff. So yeah, I'm camped here in Birch Bay and there's a lot of RV places in Birch Bay. It's a, it's a coastal town, lots of RV parks. But the cool one about this campsite Vlog viewer uh, Joe is parked uh, just down right there. Really cute rig, just just past that travel trailer. So it's pretty cool to, to bump into him. And Joe, if you're ever in Bo or La Connery time soon, DM me on Twitter and <laughs> let me know. Maybe we'll meet up. So this is my last day in this campground, and then we're moving on. Now, Lady Jupes isn't taking us to Oregon for the eclipse, but we are going to park her at the junkyard while we go to the eclipse, and that means I got to get work done today before we go. And those of you who've been watching the vlog for a while know that I've had some freezing problems in my water bay in the past, and I, I pretty much sucked at taking care of those. <clears throat> Oops. But uh, also, as we drive, you know, about after about a thousand miles of driving, I start to develop a slight water leak here in my bay, and it's, it's these fittings that just sort of come loose over time. So today, I'm doing two things. Number one, I'm going to tighten down all of the connections to stop any leaking that's occurring now. And then number two, I'm going to install a flood sensor. Now this is a Bluetooth LE accessory. It runs about two years on battery, and this is what it looks like. This is also a temperature sensor, and it can trigger actions using HomeKit when temperatures get to, say, 35 degrees. I can automatically have a bulb turn on in the bay, and then when they get up to 40 degrees, turn it off. But more importantly than that, it has three gold contacts, which are going to be hard to see on camera, but it has three gold contacts. And when these three contacts touch or sense water, or it makes a circuit, it will send an alert to my phone to let me know that the leak has come back in the bay, to let me know if my fix worked or not. And now, hopefully, once I tighten all this stuff, there won't be any leaks. But I suspect after a lot of bumpy driving, like a thousand miles or so, we'll probably get some more leaks, and this guy will let me know that. So that's my job today. Sensor is in, and it's already working great. Since my frozen water in the winter, I've really tried to stay on top of maintenance. And anytime I see something going on with the RV, I try to jump on it. Okay, well, it took more than just frozen water. Sometimes I'm a slow learner. There was also a situation that I never told you guys about. While we were in Texas, 
visiting Dell. Okay, what's going on? Um, well, <laughs> so there was one thing we didn't get to before we left that I was particularly concerned about because we've never worked on it since we bought Lady Jupes, and it was the generator. It's obviously critical to what we're doing here. We got a bunch of equipment we have to charge. We turned it off after it cooled down so we could save gas. We went to go turn it back on to make dinner, and it's making some weird noises, some bad sounds. It doesn't sound right. It smells like oil. It smells like oil to me. Yeah. I wonder if it's the oil filter. It's almost, I think it's probably, it's hot. It's, you can touch yeah, it. But. Maybe it's supposed to be hot. Well, we know. Oh yeah, it's been running with two air conditioners going. Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. But you know what? That's probably it. It probably just worked as hard as, hard as it's ever worked. In, yeah. In probably nine months. And I wonder, I wonder if uh, if that oil filter just needs to get changed out. We might have we might, might have, have to do that here. We might have a situation where we have to change the oil filter in the parking lot of Dell. Well, okay. We're gonna hunker down and go off of battery lights for a bit and keep things running at a minimum to extend our batteries. I think if we let the generator cool down, it'll probably work under light load. I'm betting it's when it's put under a heavy, heavy load it's gonna struggle. And maybe that's an oil filter thing, maybe it's something else. Noah and I will kick it around when he gets here. Exclusive reporting. There's a cat that lives in the Dell parking lot. Exclusive, right here. Do you see that? Only on this vlog would this ever be exposed. The cat that lives in the Dell, look at that cat. He walks like he owns this place. Let's see what happens. Hey, kitty kitty. Hey, where are you going? What's going on? Hey, you know anything about generators? I'm guessing that maniac driving through the parking lot's Noah. There's some maniac driving through the parking lot. I'm betting that's Noah. Yeah, probably. We, just, no, we waste no time. So here's what happens as we get here. And of course we use the generator on and off throughout the whole trip down, but we get here and it's 90 degrees. So we turn the generator on, turn on both air conditioners, mm -hmm. It runs for about 40, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. We get the temperature down. We feel like now that it's nighttime, we can open up the windows. Mm -hmm. So we turn off the generator. Then, later on, about a half hour later, Hadia decides she wants to cook, and so we're gonna turn the generator back on. Mm -hmm. It starts up, mm -hmm. runs, runs, and then right before we normally switch over, it turns off. And then from that point, it was like, it was like, it was, to me it sounded like it wasn't getting gas, but then, I decided, well, one of the things that always works is when we can't get it to start, the autogen system usually can. Like it, I, thought, I thought you were gonna say no up here. So, we, uh, so I put an autogen in test mode. Mm -hmm. First couple times autogen tried it, wouldn't start. Just tsh -tsh -tsh -tsh. And then it waited and it waited. And then about five minutes later, autogen, it started and it shut off. <clears throat> I went over there and opened up the bay and it's hot, it was hot, you know. It's 90 degrees, we've been driving all day. Yeah. And uh, we had both generator, or we had both AC units running, which is pulling a ton of load. Yeah. So things worked harder than it's probably worked in nine months. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if, me, if all the other thing is when, it, when Autogen did get to start up for a little bit, mm -hmm. I thought I was seeing some blue smoke come out. And it smelled really oily to me. Oh, and I'm yeah. wondering if it's maybe like just a really old oil filter, because we've never changed the oil filter on the thing. But I don't know. run it a ton either, right? Well, you know, oh, in the really? year though, I mean, no, yeah. no, not a ton, but in in the year we've we've ran it quite a bit. It's blue, it's burning. Huh? Interesting. Yeah, it might even start up right now. Should we try it? Let's go find it. So I'm gonna give it a go. I'll, so if I hold down, usually you'll see the numbers. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's already working better than it was gonna work last time. This wasn't even lighting up. So that's like the hours. Mm -hmm. Then once you've primed it, you start it. It doesn't sound, it sounds a little rough, but it sounds like it's starting. It's starting? How is this happening? 
Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna start. Is it gonna switch up? Oh, it switched over. All right, so we're we're charging. So it's up and running now, like it switched over. Glad I could help. See, that's what I was thinking is when it cooled down, it would probably work, but I think we got a bigger problem. And we're, of course, we're gonna need this damn thing to run the air conditioners. You don't, you don't think maybe it's just a thermal thing and it was just too hot? And just now it cooled down? No. I don't know. Noah thinks maybe it was just a thermal thing. It does. I am gonna look. I'm gonna look up the manual on on what its thermal limits are to see if that is part of what it could be. I think it's something bigger than thermal, though. Maybe. lesson learned there do the maintenance on your equipment before you leave it's a process I mean that's what today's about trying to just take care of things as they crop up I think it's just gonna be an ongoing learning process and sometimes we just had to learn the hard way feel like it's like actually happening like it's sinking yeah. in right now that we've made this trip all the way to Austin yeah